It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hop Along Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, Ten Strike Gold. Dead gum, that's just how I figures it. What did you figure that way, California? Why, uh, didn't I say, Hoppy? Nope, not a word. <laughs> Funny, must have figured it myself. Must have. Well, I was thinking, something's come over to hop along cast. You don't say. Here we are, come all the 60 miles, nigh on to 10 strike, and nary a bit of trouble do I have to haul you out. Well, a man has to tend to his business sometime. If the Bar 20 Ranch can buy a string of blooded horses, we is for sale at 10 strike. I'll... Well, it doesn't seem so peaceful now, California. Probably some fellow just a hunting himself a rabbit. California, you know nobody hunts rabbits with a coat. Hold on there, boy. Ho. Oh. Maybe the poor fellow don't own a rifle. Uh, now, let's not get mixed up in nothing, Hoppy. Look down the arroyo, California. Pretty, ain't it? Uh, awful dry, though. Along the road. You can see as well as I can. Uh, and dusty, too. The stagecoach and a road agent. So hold up. Let's go. Looks like he shot up the express messenger already. And the driver's getting in the strong box. Guess we better stop that right now. Steady, boy. Right with you, Hoppy. Looks like he's scared off. That don't indicate he's so mighty scareable. Least ways it don't bother his shooting hand none. Ha. He's had enough. He's running off. High tail end for the hill. Anyway, he's dropped the money box. Hold your fire, California. He's out of range now. Hey, driver, how's your partner? He's shot. Can't you see? Sure, we can see, but how bad is it? Oh, not too bad, fellas. Just wing me in the arm. Hoppy, how about going after that confounded road agent? Sir? No chance with our tired horses, California. That fellow was riding a blooded roan. And our horses haven't had a handful of grain for two days. Doggone, I'd sure like to catch me a stagecoach robber, I would. Better move over, driver, so I can climb up there and look at your pal's wound. Uh, who are you, stranger, to give me orders? Your name's Cassidy. He's Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah, Feller from Bar 20, you get around a lot, eh? I get around some. Yeah, so they say. Always around. Mind telling me your handle? No, not at all. Hardhead Brophy, they call me. Very appropriate. Now, do you mind moving over? Yeah, I guess not. He wouldn't have got shot if he'd had any sense. Bandit had a drop on us, and this fool kid went for his gun. Well, that was his job, isn't it? And a fella might have shot me, too. My, that would have been too, too bad. What's that? Uh, me? Uh, I'm California. Please to meet you, hardhead. Say, uh, how come you don't have no passengers? A special gold dust run. Passengers might get shot up. Now, let me see your arm, messenger. Rance Morgan's the name, Mr. Cassidy. I've heard a lot about you. Ah, uh, this doesn't look too bad. If we can stop the bleeding, I'll just cut your shirt sleeve here with my knife and tie a tourniquet around the arm for a while. Fool kid, messenger. Might have got both of us killed. You got any real big objections, Brophy? Save them for later. This boy should get to a doctor. Sort of quick, if you don't mind. Ah, uh, trying to be a hero. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Hop in California have just interrupted a stagecoach holdup in time to prevent the theft of the strong box. 
But not before Rance Morgan, the express messenger, is shot. You know, Rance, it just doesn't seem trail-wise to try a fast draw when a rodation has a drop on you. That was the parson. Ah, local bad man, huh? Plenty bad. He wears a preacher's frock coat, a black hat, and mask. And I intend to get him. Looks like you invited him to get you first. You're sort of young to be an express messenger, aren't you? I'm 20. That's old enough. I've got a special reason for doing this job. Oh? That sounds like revenge. My brother was a messenger. And my girl's father drove stage. The parson shot both of them. In the back. you not to do it. I begged you. I know, Molly. Now, Miss Laird, Rance will be all right. The doctor said so. He might have been killed. And what for? Oh, uh, well, a fellow naturally wants revenge. What good does that do? Would it bring anybody back to life? No, ma'am. It sure wouldn't. But if he'd kill the parson, why... Miss California. You know how I feel, Molly. I'll never be satisfied until I get the parson for what he's done. I don't want revenge, Rance. I want you alive. A man don't feel right, Miss Laird, if he can't settle a score. Gun crazy. That's what all of you are. Just plain killing gun crazy. Miss Laird, excuse me for saying so, but your friend Rance should be kept quiet. I'm sorry, Mr. Cassidy. And I do appreciate it. Well, don't mention it, Miss. And now, if you could direct me to a general store where I could buy some grub for us, I'd be obliged. I've got to get some things for Rance that the doctor ordered, so you might go with me. Thank you, miss. That is, if I could leave Rance. Why, I'll be all right, Molly. Uh, I'll be pleased to stay till you get back. In the meantime, I can clean my gun. California. Oh, well, that's just, uh, just in case we find some use for him, Hobby. Mm-hmm. Just sort of in case. <laughs> Mighty unfortunate introduction, Miss Laird, but you know, uh, we came to Ten Strike to do some business with you. With me, Mr. Cassidy? Well, we heard down at the bar 20 that you had a string of fine riding stock for sale. Oh, I do. You see, Dad had saved for years to buy our little ranch, looking forward to retirement. He, he was just about to... to... I know, Miss Laird. I, I shouldn't let it get me like this, but Dad's hobby was fine horses, and now I have to sell them all. Oh, if he knew Hopalong Cassidy was interested in his horses, he'd be real proud. Well, they'd get gentle care at the bar 20. Could you come out to the ranch this afternoon to look them over? Oh, I think California and I'd be pleased to. Fine. Oh, this is Lou Gribble's general store. Well, do stores stay closed in the middle of the day on 10 strikes? Things have been awfully quiet since some of the mines closed down. I guess there's not enough trade for... Oh, there's Lou coming down the street. Oh, I hope he's got the supplies I need. He's been so good to me since Dad was killed. Treats me like a daughter. I'm coming, Molly. Coming. <laughs> Hasn't Lou a funny walk? <laughs> Just like a little boy. Don't hurry, Lou. We won't run off. You closed up to go fishing. I just heard what happened to Ranch. Awful. It's awful. It is. But he was lucky this time. Well, I'll open up here. We'll be in business in a jiffy. <laughs> You've heard of Hopalong Cassidy, Lou. Hopalong Cassidy? I sure have. It's a real pleasure to know you. Yes, sir, a mighty real pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Gribble. Now, enter my emporium. <laughs> what you don't see, we ain't got. Shall it be, uh, ladies first? Oh, no. Mr. Cassidy's in a hurry, I know, and I've time. Well, our wants are simple. Just a side of bacon, ten pounds of flour, same with jerked beef, and a sack of oats for the horses. Yes, sir, Mr. Avalong. Hey, was it really the parson what robbed the stage? So they say. I don't know too much about this parson. No, nothing but a brief shooting acquaintance, Mr. Gribble. Hi, but Miss Laird sure is some fine stock in this here corral, Hoppy. Yeah, I'd say our late father was a pretty good judge of horse flesh. Bet she doesn't take care of her stock, though. Oh, no, Hoppy. Seeing she's a female, I think they look right smart. All curried, combed, and grain-fed. And... All except one California. That big, jumpy roan on the other side of the corral. Say, now, he do look like he's in a sweat. I'll just drop a loop around him and get acquainted. Think Miss Laird will see us from the house? Well, what about it? Aren't we inspecting her horses? Well, here goes. <laughs> Smack dab around his neck. Yeah. 
Yeah, boy. Nothing to be nervous about. He sure is a beauty. Take it easy now, old fella. Take it easy. You know what I'm thinking? I don't know, Hoppy, but this here horse has been rode hard and unreasonable not long ago. Right. And turned loose without a rub down. Suggest anything, California? Yeah. The parson was riding a big roan, wasn't he? With a white stocking on the off hind leg. Just like this horse. Hoppy, you... Hoppy, you don't think, uh, uh, the parson couldn't be, uh... Molly Laird? Hardly California, not a lady road agent. But if her horse was used in hold-up... Now, but... let's not jump at conclusions. Might have been barred. Might be a different horse. We could find out sure easy enough uh, up at her house. We might. And we might not. Seeing that Miss Laird seems to have a caller. Why, uh, that's that stage driver, Brophy. <laughs> Mr. Brophy, I don't really know what business we have to talk over. Well, you know, your pa was a special friend of mine. I got to take care of his daughter. I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, but you might not, honey, when you find out what I know about you and that holdup today. I don't know what you mean. Please. Yeah, what's wrong with putting my arm around a pretty girl, huh? I don't like it. Oh, now, honey, you know a girl who's mixed up with road agents can't be too choosy. What? Not so innocent, little sweetheart. Now, how about us getting to be real good friends? No. Get away. Get out. You quiet down. I happen to know the horse that was used in the hold-up today was your horse. Let me go. Stop. You're the lady, Brophy. Let her go. Oh, Mr. Cassidy. What's it to you, Cassidy? Oh, you to put in you. Look out, Hoppy. I saw that haymaker hard head. Now, catch the you did. This is the last one you'll see. You... Side up, set your home this way. They don't call me hard head for nothing. Yeah. Hoppy, you knocked him plumb through the screen door. You aren't hurt, are you? No, thanks. But his head is kind of hard. Look at him, laying outside there in the grass, <laughs> just as sweet and peaceful as if he was a snoozing. <laughs> the no-good sidewinder. Oh, you skinned your knuckles. Ah, that doesn't hurt much. We heard that mule skinner pestering you as we was walking by the porch. You mentioned one of your horses, I believe. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing at all worth repeating. Well, I was just a little curious. One horse in the corral's been uh, ridden hard and not even rubbed down. Really? Just thought I'd mention that someone's been mighty careless of your stock. Oh, I didn't know. Thanks for telling me. You, <clears throat> you ride much, Miss Molly? Me? Oh, I don't get the chance. You see, the horses get so little exercise, I let most anybody who happens to need a horse borrow one. Well, Miss Molly, with all the mysterious hold-ups and killings that are going on, it might be wise to be careful about who gets a hold of your horses. Yeah, it might be somebody traces stage robber's uh, horse to its home corral and figure the wrong way about. And it might also be that if some folks wouldn't get so interested in other people's business, there wouldn't be so many killings. Well, when a man shot at, he naturally wants to get the fellow who tried to kill him. He'd show more sense if he'd leave us alone. I don't quite follow you, Miss Molly. I think it's clear enough. You're doing nothing but stirring up more hatred and revenge and death. Then you'd rather we just leave the whole thing alone. That's exactly how I feel. And the sooner you learn that, the quicker we'll find peace around here. Before we continue with this exciting story, here is a word from your announcer.
Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Despite the fact that Molly Laird flared up and demanded that the matter of the killings not be pursued, Hoppy still intends to transact his business deal with her. He is arranging with Mr. Bowers, the banker, to buy the herd of horses that roam Molly's range. Well, that signature seals the bargain, Mr. Bowers. Not as high a price as Molly Laird might have gotten, nor as low either. If I was in Hoppy's boots, I wouldn't be buying at all. That's the way she talked to us. You can take the horses any time it's convenient, Mr. Cassidy. Now, I'm a busy man, so if you'll excuse me... Just a minute, Mr. Bowers. I'm a stranger in these parts. So I notice. Observing man, ain't you? California. (laughs) I was a little curious about that holdup I witnessed today. Were you? Yeah. Do you think this frock-coated mask road agent is a local man? How should I know? You might be interested. Seeing as how two citizens attend strike has been planted in Boot Hill, because of his playful use of their backs as targets... How do you know it was the parson who shot them in the back? Well, that's what Rance's brother said when he was dying. Well, bandit though he is, until that time he had a fair and square reputation, as road agents go. He was known as a man of courage. Seems like I'm attacking the reputation of a favorite son of Ten Strike, California. Mayhap this here hold-up man's a sort of local hero. Huh? Yeah. You two are strangers here, and I'll give you credit for not knowing that we like to take care of our own troubles. So I see. This here's the second person to get sore when you criticize this parson for it. Now, uh, is there anything else? Oh, I guess we can take a hint. Come on, California. Uh, Bald, the saddle, bird, sunfish, and mean, cantankerous, rambunctious, honorary coyotes as I ever saddled up to. Why, I, I, he, uh, why, Hobby, I'm so darn sore I'm speechless. <laughs> well, if you're speechless, California, I hope I never find you in a talkative mood. Why, that pigeon toed rascal. Uh, say, did you notice how he laid his ears back when you mentioned that bandit? Yeah, he is pigeon toed, isn't he? Oh, say, uh, here comes Rance Morgan, he's self. Well, must be feeling pretty good to be up and around. Oh, I was afraid I might not see you before you left him strike, Hoppy. Oh, I get a feeling we'll be around a short spell. Is that what got you up and around, Rance? Oh, actually, no. The stage superintendent wanted me to come to the office for an emergency. You want to take care of that arm. Well, thanks to you, I didn't lose much blood. And as long as I carry it in a sling, it doesn't hurt too much. Your emergency doesn't include another holdup, does it? Well, we're afraid of one. You see, there's an extra large shipment of gold dust that has to go out tomorrow. A special run, no passengers. Oh, you ain't in no condition to ride express messenger. No, and we're shorthanded. But I can drive the team. Even Brophy's supposed to have a day off tomorrow. I suspect he's going to have an off day, too. Huh? I don't follow you. We'll explain that later. Were you going to suggest something? Uh, now, Hoppy, don't talk yourself into nothing. We get horses to drive back to the bar 20. Mm-hmm. We already had a shooting scrape, a fight, and got the banker mad at us. We already... Well, well, well... Yes, uh, California? Uh, we're, we're interested. <laughs> well, Apollong, I-, I told the superintendent about you being here, and, well, he wondered if you two might do us the special favor of riding that gold shipment through. Uh, we do have a lot of work to do at the Bar 20, Rance. There's no denying that everybody knows about this gold, about $50,000 worth. I guess that's enough to tempt the parson. Yeah, and I'd like one more chance to be around when that parson is tempted, son. <laughs> Uh, Hoppy, uh, how do you figure it when this parson gets the drop on us? Well, if the road isn't blockaded, we'll try to find our way by him. Most of these fellows depend on surprise. We'll turn the table. And if the road is blocked? Then I'll try to swing the stage around quickly to give us some protection. And Rance, if the parson does jump us, leave things to California and me. Oh, sure, son. Uh, we're used to this sort of thing. Uh, don't bother us a bit. Why, we'll give him back shot for shot. It's the uh, parson! Hoppy, do something! But you're going to help me. Get shot the gun out of his hand, Hoppy. Now he's ducked behind that bush. Maybe this will bring him out. <laughs> he's skedaddling. Get on off this stage, quick. Let's get our horses. Uh, he'll get away. We can trail him, Rance. Well, I'm taking no chance. We'll bring him back. I want that killer dead. Dead with my bullets in him. Oh, God. You dropped him like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Wish I'd put a few more in him just for good measure. We could have brought him back, Rance. We had the advantage. Whose side are you on, anyway, Hoppy? I thought you came out to help me get the parson. I came out to try to bring justice, Rance. 
not to see vengeful lead pumped into a man. Well, he'd have hung anyway. What difference does it make? Just the difference between law and mob rule. Oh, I haven't time for this lecturing. I've got a gold shipment to think about. Well, I'll try to get through these bushes and take the parson's body back to Ten Strike. It ain't gonna be easy, Hoppy. He's out there in the thick of it. You ride along with Rance, California. I don't need anybody. Things are gonna be safe around here now that I got the parson. Even if some folks don't think I should have. Get up there. I don't like to see you right on alone, Rance. You tend to that dead skunk and I'll tend to my gold. Wish I could wait to see who he is, but I haven't time now. He's sure in a powerful hurry, Hoppy. Yeah, and he's pulling a lot of gold. Well, let's get this over with. You cinch tighten? Yep. Now, let's cut down through this gully. We're going to have to ride through that manzanita. Guess the parson's horse is plumb back to ten strike by now. Them bullets sure scared the poor critter. Can you see his body? Right through here, I think. Uh, What's that? I'm coming from down the road there. Where are the stages? Yeah, I knew there'd be trouble when I let that fool kid ride on alone. Come on. Son, there's $50,000 worth of gold missing. But I, I tell you, it was the parson. I killed him and and still he robbed me. Well, weren't you alerted against attack? Well, he was on me before I knew it. He took my gun. There, uh, There's something that looks uh, mighty like a gun uh, right here. Oh, this is another one I had in the stage. I shot at him as he was riding off. Then those were your shots we heard. I guess so. The parson didn't fire any. Most dead men don't. But you've got to believe me. He rode up here. The parson. I believe you, Rance. Uh, uh, well, you Hoppy, see the footprints here? But that bandit's dead, Hoppy. Out in them bushes in the road. Dead. Nobody lives with that much lead in him. But he came back. I've got to finish the job I started, California. I've got to go back and get that body. Huh? Uh, well... I'm stark raving mad, I guess. Here you tell Ranch you believe his story about the parson holding him up. I do. Then you want to go out and get the body of the parson who's been dead all the time. Can't you do anything but ask questions? So long, California. See you back in town. Tuffy, you sure the most unconcerned man I ever did see. Why should I be concerned, California? Why, uh, with the bandits being killed and bandits still running loose, and uh, you ask me to take a walk to the bank? <laughs> That's right. Just go into the bank and take a look. Things are the way I think they are. You know what to do. Sure, I know what to do, but that don't mean I like to do it. Uh, now, look at here, Hoppy. What fur did you take that road agent's body up to Laird's barn? Why, it seemed a convenient place to take it, California. Convenient? Uh, would you mind telling me what you're aiming to do meanwhile? Oh, I thought I might drop into Lou Gribble's store here and get some beans. I forgot to buy them yesterday. Beans. Oh, sightseeing in a bank. And at a time like this, why, uh, you're the oddest fellow I ever did see. <laughs> why, hello, Mr. Hopalong. What can I do for you? I came in to buy some beans, Mr. Gribble. Beans, eh? Say, you're quite the hero around town now you killed the bandits. I didn't kill anyone. Ranch shot the parson. The parson, eh? Uh, tell me now, who was he? Well, I think we ought to wait until the county sheriff arrives before we start announcing all the details. After all, there's another bandit loose, you know. So they say, so they say. You got any ideas? Only that I need about five pounds of beans before I start back to the bar 20. Oh, sure, sure. I almost forgot. I'll get them right away. Mighty fine weather we're having, isn't it? I've been noticing that. Hasn't rained for a week, has it? No, sir, it sure isn't. Take him up! The parson, the masked parson. No, no, Tibby, you're a ghost. I'll just relieve you of that 50,000 in gold, Lou Gribble. Brophy, you know, they killed you. I saw you dead myself. It's my gold now. The gold, give me the gold. If you're not dead, I'll make sure. I'll kill you. Get out, California. <laughs>
now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Are you sure you're all right, Mr. Cassidy? I was terrified when I heard all the shooting. Sure, not a scratch. Oh, hey, golly, the lead sure did fly awful fast. If Hoppy hadn't been lightning fast in the draw, Gribble would have ventilated in my <laughs> You really did a convincing imitation of the parson, in California. You had poor Luke Gribble pop-eyed. Thinking that hard-head Brophy had come back to life. Then all along there were two parsons. Because Brophy was driving the stage when that holdup occurred last week. That's just why Brophy didn't want Rance to shoot the other parson. He was too good an alibi. Uh, I'm sort of confused. Uh, what about this here holdup today? It was Brophy's body out there in the bushes? Yeah. When I returned, I found it turned over and unmasked. There were footprints all around it. Matching the footprints in the road by Rance's stagecoach. Oh, God. Even though uh, Lou Gribble was high tailing it with the gold, he couldn't resist stopping to see who the other parson was. But how did footprints tell you that the bandit was Gribble? They were pigeon-toed prints, Miss Molly. And there are very few pigeon-toed men. Only two in this town. Yep, Lou Gribble and the banker, Mr. Bowers. Hoppy figured that the one with the muddy boots would be the bandit. I took a look at the bankers, and they were shiny. So then I put on the parson's rig and came busting into Gribble's store. I wanted to scare Gribble into a confession. I didn't figure he'd start shooting at what he thought was a ghost. I felt like I was on my way to being a ghost for a minute there. <laughs> You know, Hoppy, I'm awful glad. And what have you got to be glad about? Well, if being pigeon-toed can get a fella like Gribble into such a heap of trouble, I'm mighty glad I'm people-toed. And so an exciting adventure ends for Hoppy in California. They'll get back to the Bar 20 just about roundup time and settle down to a peaceful ranch. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>